we're in good shape. All right, now you very, uh, you have to be very delicate with this. Just pull that out, okay. Uh, everything is good with this. It's nice and hard, it's not gonna change anywhere. Uh, I go ahead and I, I brush this foam off with my thumb. Try to break some of this excess plaster off right here. Then just take a soft brush. You don't need a wire, don't use a wire brush because it, it'll score the plaster. Then I just simply uh, take the, the brush and just get the toes uh, so that there's no foam all around the toes. Okay, and then go back around the cast. And I'm getting all of the, uh, all of the foam off of here, or as much as I can. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this so that it'll blow right into you. <laughs> All right. Um, we have a we have a a, a little uh, a little pencil here. It's called an indelible pencil. It uh, not indelible, but indelible. Uh, and and what I'll do with this is that if you recall, we wanted to talk about three. Uh, three points of contact. The easiest way for me to do this is to put a little scratching across the table and I'll run this cast across. And then if it was done correctly, it should have three points of contact. And it does. One, two, oh, three. Okay, well that's not right. I've got to get that toe out of there. So I just take the file and I get the toes down out of my way. The toes mean nothing to me. Of course they do to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Now, one more time. I'll turn it over. And closer, I have contact heel, fifth, and sort of across the uh, second, uh, second to five. So that's not quite the way I want it. Now, I said before, I want this to be totally flat. So I take the flat file, go across the cast like so and get this so that there's no uh, rocking. I put it down on a clean table, no rocking, it's, it's good. Okay, I'll clean with the uh, wire brush. <laughs> I'll get that off, and I'm not banging this on the table because that, that metal will break. I slip it back into the toolbox. Done with that. Okay. Now, I have my half round, and I'm going to take the half round, and at this point, you can decide whether you want to be a pusher or a puller. It's totally up to you. But you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm not... Oh, hang on a minute, Raymond. We're gonna we're gonna get it done. The interpreter. Your hand is hot. Uh, no, what we want to do is we we want to take the half round file and just go down through here, and you notice that there's a lot of uh, like build up of plaster along here. That's not your foot. So I want to clean this off so that I get all that down to uh, just about. Uh, where it's where it's now it's it's all one layer okay but now uh, Laura you do not have that sharp abrupt edge on your foot okay at least on uh, Wednesday you did not have it so what I'll do it is what what I'll do uh, what I'll do is I'm just rounding this up gently you notice I'm putting very little pressure on the file a little bit more pressure on the sides and now you'll notice that I have it's not wavy, it's not cut in, it's a nice uh, smooth edge all the way along the meat of uh, the lateral border. I'll, I'll turn it around and I'll do the same thing along the medial border, exposing your your uh, your foot from all this extra plaster. And this is just where the where the wet plaster went into the edges of the foam, and that that's all this is. I can't leave it like that because it, it, it'll make your foot incredibly wide, okay, and, and it's not that way. So I'm just running down here and I'm deciding that I wanted to push this instead of pull, okay. That really makes no difference. You can go either direction as long as you're getting it done. Now what I want to do here, I, you notice these spots right here, I can almost crack those off with my finger. 
but I'm going to take the file and I'm going to very gently file in this area in the arch and just shape the arch in so that it looks more like your foot and I get it I get all the extra material out of there okay so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice smooth arch then I come up here by your first met now on the side of the first met everything's okay but there's there's two areas that are or three areas that are totally off base you cannot touch the first and you cannot touch the fifth with the file okay those you cannot compromise because that's something that we're using from start to finish in terms of making the orthotic if you if you touch the first and the fifth to the file you will distort it and then everything is off. thrown off we don't know where we are okay so I'm gonna go right here you've got a little bit of a ridge right here behind your first very very gently I'm just using very light pressure and I'm just pulling that file and just getting rid of that little ridge uh, again not in your foot okay so now I have your uh, I have the uh, arch uh, the, the medial border the lateral border everything is good the heel still needs some attention but I'll scrape this off then uh, around the heel, uh, you'll notice that I don't work with the cast up here. Uh, years of doing this, I have a little bursitis in the shoulder, so what I do is I just uh, hold it here and work with it on the table so I'm not having to push down and then force this arm up. It didn't make any sense. But what I'll do is I'll go around the heel, getting that just like I've done the medial and lateral, but I have to be very careful to keep moving the file in a round manner so I don't put flat spots on here. Well, what will happen is that flat spots will cause you to get blisters. And and uh, I don't think you want it, and I certainly don't want it for you. Then, I just come up around the heel, and again, just taking this excess off. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm going to, uh, I have to, I have to establish your first and fifth. And we've already checked it once, but I've moved a few things around. I'm just going to check and make sure that everything is good. I run it back across my mark, and I'm still calcaneus fifth. That's okay. But right in through here, I need to change that. And what I'm going to do is take the half round file. And let me give you a, a little bit of a pencil mark to guide me here so that I cannot go to either side of, of those stripes right here. I have to stay in between, okay? I take my, my file and I work right back into, your, into this area, creating a, a little bit of a dell right through this area. Not much. I can check it. And you can see I haven't put much uh, in here, a very little bit right here. Okay, then I'll just blend this into the foot so that you don't have any abruptness. And then I, I, I kind of feel this almost blindly, and I don't like what I'm feeling right here, right in through here. Okay, and, and I'll pass this around in a moment, and you can, you can feel that. But let me run it back across. Okay, and now I'm hitting right on my mark right here. So very gently, all I'm going to do is just file right in this area up by my mark. I thought you said we weren't supposed to compromise the bottom. So it doesn't compromise the bottom. The you got to get your three points of contact. Okay. Yeah. So I'm establishing, and this mark. If I, you remember, we talked uh, on the. I couldn't make my arrow come up on the slide. But what we do is we mark this in the center of the, of the first, the, the center of, of the fifth. Uh, and, and so this area right in here is where it's going to be um, Laura's bisection of her first and fifth. Those marks are very, very close. Uh, they're not far from that at all. And I'm, I'm very happy with this. So at this point, uh, I'm, I'm finished with the uh, with the filing 
and and uh, getting the uh, the first step of preparation ready. So we have the marks are very close and and good. I, I usually use about a quarter of an inch. You'll also notice that it feathers off and tapers off on the purse, so it may be difficult to actually move that out. Plus, I can move this with sandpaper, so I have to still have to sand this. So, if you want to just stop this a minute, and then I'll pass it around, and we'll then we'll resume. So, what you want to do is you want to, uh, you know, you'll have a step-by-step -step video. Security. <laughs> so, what we'll do? I've got some other tools, you know. Uh, as I was, I was telling him about the plaster. Uh, if, if, if there's a little bit of an abruptness right here in the arch, when it's turned over, uh, this area right here is actually going to poke up into Laura's arch, and and is going to cause her some problems. So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of plaster, which will actually lower the arch. Um, and and it's going to be instead of at a precise measurement, it's going to be to touch okay so what I do is I have a spatula this is really just a cake uh, decorating uh, tool it's it's about a four inch blade uh, it has some pliability to it some people in the O&P field use wooden uh, tongue depressors but the tongue depressor is uh, uh, so dry it'll suck the moisture out of the of the plaster and it doesn't have a good bond it doesn't flow over it I use these food trays to hold plaster in. The food trays are nice because they're less than a penny a piece. Uh, I can, I can, uh, I, I actually, I started to lose weight when I realized that I could buy them and not have to eat my way into my inventory. Uh, but uh, they're just a, like a little French fry tray. Uh, so I'll put some plaster in here, a little bit of water. Um, I mix a, a little bit, and now this wa this water and plaster has to be a little bit um, a little bit uh, more like yeah like peanut butter type thicker. consistency a little thicker so I mix it uh, I'm not gonna want it as wet as the what we poured with okay now it also make it a little bit harder plaster too so I have to remember that when I'm filing so I'd rather add a little bit more water and at this point I added a little too much so I'll just pour that back into my cup no, no. Um, then uh, just and as I'm I'm mixing this up, I, I will I'll show you how you can tell if it's ready to go. I clean the spatula off, and if it falls off, it's not ready. Okay, it's going. You're going to have a hard time with it. Put a little bit more dry plaster in here, and mix this, and it will be uh, just right. You should be able to make one complete turn with the spatula and the plaster not falling off and it's ready to apply and this is really nothing more than uh, it's like cake decorating is that like a blizzard at, at Dairy Queen? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if that's what it reminds you of yes okay so now I put this back on the spatula and I make a complete turn and it stays on so it's it's ready Okay, so I'll take a little bit of, of plaster and I'll feel that abruptness. I'll start right here and feather that back and forth. I'll add a little bit of plaster in here and, it, and at first you're going to go, oh wow, he's, he's putting a lot of plaster in here uh, and not so much and this is not finished. So uh, you need to figure out, well he's obviously then going to be taking some out of here. Right now, all I'm doing is extending the blend so that I have a nice, smooth uh, uh, contour. And, um, and then I can add that in. And when you look at this area right here, does, doesn't that remind you of a scaphoid pad? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's that kind of an area. And then when I rub my hand over there, I'm like, yeah, you know what? This feels a lot, uh, a lot better. So, Raymond, if you want to stop that for just a minute, what I'm do with this is I'm going to gently... Uh, just like a cheese gator, grater, I'm going to run this over the uh, over my plaster that I added in, and I'm just going to feather it out using a very very light touch. I'm not trying to put much pressure on it at all. I don't want to change Laura's arch 
but I want to make sure that I get it nice and smooth. Okay, and this feels, uh, this actually feels even better than the last time. All right, now, all my, I'll get my plaster out of the way. Make sure you record that sound. I clean out my, my file because I'm pretty much finished with this. I put it in the, in here, and I have one other tool that I use, and that is uh, sandpaper. So this is a 220, okay? Uh, you don't need a very big piece. Just get a piece that'll fit into your couple of fingers. That's all you need. Um, I There's a several ways that we can do this, but I just wet. Uh, I wet the sandpaper for a wet sand. I start over here, and I start rubbing that cast. Now, um, you see how I'm taking my file marks out? Okay, this is going to make this really nice and smooth for, for Laura, so that it'll be, uh, it'll be a nice smooth cast. Make sure that I check it out. I'm gonna clean off my sandpaper. You can kind of you can reuse the sandpaper. It doesn't uh, doesn't go bad quickly. I, I definitely uh, want to put um, uh, your name on it so we know whose it belongs to. Okay, and uh, everything here I, I feel across this direction and this direction and uh, see if that feels uh, smooth enough for you. When, it, when you put this in, uh, if you're going to be making this for a full-length diabetic, all one piece, uh, usually I'll push out the toe characters in the foam so that I'll extend it out to make it long enough to be able to make a full-length one piece, sort of a unibody uh, type of an insert. But uh, this one is going to be three-quarter length and then a, a full top cover, because I'd like for you to get the the idea of the grinding, and uh, uh, sometimes when you there's different techniques to grinding full length versus three quarter, and if you can grind the three quarter, you can grind the full length. So it's easier to get started with this one, not necessarily easier, but once you get your way through it, you're in very good shape. Now the only thing that I want to do here is I want to uh, um, I want to take a ruler and I want to lay this out. So along the lateral aspect of the heel, I put a line on the cast, okay? I do the same thing on the medial side, coming up to the center of the hallux. So I have two parallel lines running back through the longitudinal aspect of the metatarsals. Then I look at the widest point of Laura's first metatarsal, and it's right here. I do the same thing along the fifth metatarsal, and it is right here. I take my ruler, and I'll put a uh, kind of a connect the dot here, okay? And that is giving me the bisection of her first and fifth. Now, with this, what I want to do is I want to measure back one centimeter behind or proximal to the, uh, the, first, uh, the first metatarsal. So I'll put a mark right here at one centimeter. I want to come back a half centimeter behind the fifth. I draw a line across here, okay? I, I want my, my target point for my orthotic and grinding is going to be right in between these two lines. So you have a parabolic curve on your metatarsal heads. And I want to acknowledge that with, the, uh, with this, so what I do 
is I just kind of freehand coming up to the high point, which would be right here, and then I, I dump out onto the uh, first like this. So when I make your orthotic, that will be the way the distal end will appear right here. This way it comes up, supports the parabolic curvature of the metatarsals, comes back behind the first and the fifth so that it won't impinge on your metatarsal heads. Okay, now at this point, uh, this this cast is, is completed. Uh, I can do things like, if, I, if this is production work, I already have your name on here, but I can go ahead and I can put a uh, female. Uh, I can do a plastazote uh, uh, three quarters, so I know that I'm doing EVA or plastazote to the med heads. Then I can do EVA and then put uh, full length, FL, full length. So now I know that I'm going to be using plastazote uh, from this point to this point. Could you go get me one of those black pieces of plastazote? It's kind of the open cell. We'll see what you come back with. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. So, what I need to do is I need to make sure that I have a thumbnail's length from the end of the heel and from side to side on the heel. Okay, this is going to be just a little bit iffy in terms of length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it this direction and make sure that I have a proper length. I can cut this uh, like so. Ah. Bend. Tear. Okay. I'll put this back up here. Make sure that I have a thumbnail's length to the edge, to the edge, and to the heel. And I do. So I'll come back at a slight angle along here, and I will bend and tear. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now I have a piece that will definitely cover my distal lines. I can get enough to get a thumbnail at the heel, a thumbnail at the medial and lateral border. The only thing I have left to do with this is to actually uh, cut a, uh, a little bit of a round area at the heel. It's, you don't do this at the forefoot, just at the heel. And what I'm doing is I'm making this, this is going to go into the oven first, then onto the vacuum, and the heel has to make the most radical bend around the plaster. The heel has to be hottest. So it goes into the back of the oven. It also, you want to take those tips off because less material to move is much easier to vacuum press. So I want to put this in and then vacuum form it and that'll cut beautifully. All right? And now it's ready to vacuum form. Put length, it just needs to clear the leading line. Thumbnail, 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 all the way around the heel. Cut the extra excess off. You don't need extra material around it at all. All right, now you're ready to do this. You go ahead and put it on the vacuum pan, turn it over, make sure it sits on the riser. The oven is ready. We'll put it in the oven. Open the door, just watch your hands. Let that shut. It takes about two minutes, roughly, about a minute, 45 seconds. To now, as that warms up, I've got everything ready to go. I need to turn my vacuum on. You blast this out. We can tell that it's it's ready to go. It's very pliable. I'll put it over the orthotic. Turn the valve. Bring this down, making sure it doesn't shift on the cast. I'll use my hand to help it around the heel. And now we have a very nice vacuum form all the way around the heel. Once this is done, we turn the vacuum system off. And and this can sit until the temperature is cool enough to take out of the uh, take out of the vacuum press. Right here. Yes. Okay, that that's what I want. Okay, this way, very simple. Uh, 
it has the, uh, the the vacuum system right here. Sucks it in here, blows it out, and up. Okay, one switch on, one switch off. Not that difficult, not that, not that complicated. Great grinders. These things are uh, interchangeable wheels. Uh, they're about $1,600 a piece. A little pricey, but they're uh, German grinders and German stuff is always more expensive than, uh, you know, it's, it's like a little BMW of the grinders. All right, now I've got my landmarks exactly where I want to be. So I know where I am here. I just want to take a little grind on the front first. So putting on my safety bifocals, if I can get those together. All right. So when you're grinding, uh, what you want to do is you want to learn where can I grind and where can I grind. You can grind anywhere from about here to about here. If you start coming up on the wheel, it's not a good place. I can sit here and work all day long right in here and not have any problem. I move up here. Can't do it. Okay? So you got to stay down on that wheel right in this area, right through here. Alright? And I'm not putting a lot of pressure, as you can see, right there, just trying to that up in there. Now, first thing I did was I cut that with this line that I used on the cast right through here. Okay, so I'm right on the line. Now, I want to grind underneath. Obviously, this is way too thick. So, did whoever took your cast, Laura, got your first and your fifth at the same position. And you made that cast work at the first and fifth position. Everybody did, right? So your first and fifth become your focal point for getting this flat. First thing I do is I grind across this visible end of the orthotic at, a, at an angle. Side always higher in relationship to the lateral side, always. That, 
that way as your foot starts to roll inward, you have more meat over here to stop it. All right, now what I want to do is I want to come down this lateral border and connect the dot from here to here. And I have a nice lateral border now, nice and, and level. Okay, this is the way it should be. It's got a little hump right here. What I do is I just come down the side. And now I get a nice lateral arch, or medial arch. Okay, everything gets really nice and, and equal right here. Now, this is too wide all around here to go in the shoe. It's not going to fit in. So, how you approach the grinder? Right like this, between your hands. Okay? That way you can control it. My hands aren't close to that grinding wheel. Straight up and down. All the way along. The medial border. Just like this. Put it together. Go along the lateral border. Okay, now I need to go around the heel cup. Turn it around. Always make sure that you can watch where you're grinding. You get it out underneath your two bar and you have no idea where you are. Turn it over. Come back in the other direction. Hey, it's starting to look like a, an orthotic, okay? Now, one of the things that I love about this shoe is it's rock solid because I have to have a solid platform to put an orthotic in. Okay, it's got to sit down there. Do you notice how it doesn't go in? It's, it's too wide. Okay, well one of the things that I've not yet done is to undercut. You have to undercut. Do you see the cue ball of the heel here and here? And it cuts in. Can you all see that right here how it cuts in? Okay, well if that's straight and this is tapered, it's not going to work. Round peg, square hole kind of thing. So what I have to do is I have to grind this to make sure that it fits into this heel. Alright, now I don't use that. I'm using this to tell you. I don't use this to shape everybody's. As I, I got a feel that uh, Raymond's uh, heel might be a little wider than this one. Alright, so I come down here and I want to turn this and undercut. So I turn it at about a 10 degree, roughly a 10 degree angle. Can you see me starting to undercut? Right through here? Okay. I don't do the same thing all the way around. Does it fit into that heel cup a little bit better? Yeah. Yep, because it's, it's, it's undercut. So now the fit is good. This is just the stroke of luck. Okay, because this is still a little wide. But it's like, man, I might have to make another one of these for a... Okay, so you wear this just like this. There's a little drop off here, but you'll be... No. Can you, uh, can you focus over here? Okay. I'm going to be on, I'm going to be using this wheel. This is a, a finer wheel, not not nearly as coarse. And this is a Scotch Brite wheel. I, I use these to kind of do some finishing work. You can only go so far. If I try to get this and do fine work with it, that's too coarse. So I have to I have to just back off of that one and say, okay, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to come over here. I turn this one on. Now what's going to happen is it's going to blow a little bit right this direction. I work down here. I just take this on the edge. Do a little fine work on the edge. Then undercut. I go all the way around with that. Thin it out all the way through. Okay. Now I've got it. I've got it uh, a little bit narrow through here, uh, even yet, and the other thing I want to do is I want to grind on the bottom. And you 
can see the difference in the finish. It starts to finish it off a little bit better. Okay, now we have another issue to deal with, and that is right underneath the arch, um, the OrthoFeet shoe and most other shoes have a, uh, a cutout towards the arch. So if I leave this full width and the shoe is cutting under, this is going to push on the arch and raise it. So what I do is I skive into the arch. And the easiest way to do that is just like this. I create my cutaway right here. And I take that up to the arch. Okay? So now it cuts in underneath. I'm going to do the same thing on the lateral side. So now it's thinner right across the center on the lateral part of the foot. Nice, even, equal surface. Finish it up. Just work on it a little bit more with the fine wheel. Round that off just a little bit. Scotch wheel. Not, I mean, that's, that's pretty fine right here. Okay. Uh, not finished, but getting close. Okay. So take a look. You can stop by. You can feel that. It's a, a Scotch Bright pad, real, real fine pad. Okay. Not, not a lot of grit to it. It's like a 320 grit sandpaper. It's very fine. But what I do with this, these are nice things with this grinder, is that you can interchange wheels. I can't put the guard down, so you know, I, I as always, put on something on the eyes. Now. What I'll do with this, you see the uh, the sharper edges right here? What I'll do is I'll come down through here. And you see how that rolls that edge? It makes it nice and, and round right there. It takes that edge away. So I'll work that all the way around. job in terms of the of the contour so it fits in very well okay last step we have with this is to uh, put a top cover on it and it's and it's done okay I did I, I I put that glue I left that glue top covering what we're gonna do we got our we got our piece finished off polished everything's real nice good I want to get a piece that will give me a long enough piece to go into your shoe I take a little bit of this glue, I put the glue on the distal edge, take it over to the top cover, move it back, and it gives me a glue line. Now, gluing the top, I glue from that glue line, side to side, not up beyond it, but just right to it. So now that it's glued from my distal edge, side to side, all the way to the end, across. 
Murphy's Law. You all understand Murphy's Law. Okay? If, if I needed glue in a certain spot and I did it, I, I omitted it, trying to save a little bit of glue, hey, it's right where I'm going to need it. Now, when you're brushing glue on your orthotic, start in the center and brush your glue out. Don't drag it across the end. You're going to get a lot of glue lines on the sides, and it's not a good thing. So, brush out. Hanging on to it now. I come around the edge. Okay. I think that wouldn't be bloopers, but glue first. Okay. All right. I'm doing this on this because there's plaster. We didn't really wash that table off. I want to make sure that you don't get a lot of, you know, you, you, we're like at the, the final point here. I want it to look nice. Okay. Even if it is for a while, I want it to look nice. Okay. So now here's here's what we want to do. Um, we want to, uh, uh, you cannot hurry this glue. This glue has what we call the become tack. Uh, where it's ready to work. If you put your hand on it and it comes up with your hand, it's not ready. All right, so I have one that's close and one that's not. So you have an hour window to glue it, but you have about a three, four minute wait before you can put it together. If you hurry, it will come apart. When we start doing too much tomorrow, you gotta let it breathe. You gotta let it come to pack. Once it's right, then it will stick like crazy. Otherwise, it's gonna come right off. Okay, so we keep checking it. We don't, a little too tacky on the orthotic. Now, what we do is we put it down. I come right up to my glue line. I turn this over. And I work this back into the heel cup. push down and expands and gives me a nice even pressure up to the side. But uh, I got I, it worked its way out, so it's gonna be just fine. You could also take something like this and put put in around and it wouldn't be any problem at all. I push over the top. Now you put it over top of the uh, of the orthotic put a pen mark around it, not all the way, just around the edges. Then cutting it with the scissors, I know it seems so easy, it's like this. you never cut all the way through, okay? You cut just so it wants to go just before it goes through, and then go back in and grab another bite, another bite. As I come up here and I'm working with the angle of my uh, plastic coat, I come out here to the line. Why is that? Why is what? Why can't you cut all the way through? You'll, you'll get, uh, it'll look like a, a beaver, like a beaver that got after it. So it'll just gnaw it off. So I'm trying to, uh, well, I want to. Okay, so I turn again so that it's working with the uh, plastic soap. If your scissors start to catch on the glue, it's easy to take a little bit of Vaseline and, and, uh, and, and put uh, a little Vaseline on the blade in it so that you get the glue off of it and then put a little thin, thin Vaseline coat and then it, it'll paint it right off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into the grinder. I'm taking it into the grinder and I'm going to put my finished cut on it and it'll be ready to go. It'll be done. Okay?